There's a big conversation right now and a little bit of a debate going on about the Democratic Party strategy of propping up more radical right wing figures in the Republican primaries in hopes of having an easier general election fight. So to give you kind of the specifics, the simplification, you probably understood it just then, but to further break it down, pretty much the idea is, OK, in the Republican primary. So when Republicans are battling against other Republicans to see who's the nominee in congressional races, senatorial, whatever, we're going to go and use use our Democratic Party money to try to support the more radical, crazy, nutty right wing option so that they beat the more reasonable option. But then the Democrat, once we get to the general election, will have an easier time beating the wacky option. Now, you obviously, I'm sure, can already understand what the dilemma is there, though. If you help support uh, in the primary a more wacky option and they get nominated and then you lose to the more wacky option, now we have somebody more wacky in power. Power. But if it makes your chances better and you win, maybe it was for the best. But you're also using money that you, you could be using on Democratic races, on Republican races to choose a more crazy person who has crazy conspiracy, conspiracy theories, etc. So I don't know where you guys land on that. It's so difficult for me because it's like, no, don't prop up bad right wing figures. But then if you showed me that it got really good results in the primary or in the general election where Democrats were able to crush all these people, then maybe it's for the best. Uh, maybe it's much harder to run against reasonable people. I don't know. I would really have to see more of the data on it and like see how these uh, races go. But obviously, you can't do that until they happen. And by that point, you could make a really mis big mistake and get a bunch of uh, Marjorie Green juniors, you know, in, in office because of this. So there's a debate going on, a lot of outrage about it, which I totally understand. It's kind of weird to spend Democratic dollars to get someone who's a conspiracy theorist, election denier, as the Republican nominee in hopes of being having an easier time beating them, but obviously risking that they actually win. Um, so with that being said, there's a moment whenever on CNN that we're about to watch where the host asks James carvel about this and i, I want to play it just because it nicely sums up the strategy nancy pelosi's response to getting asked about the strategy and then james carvel uh saying stuff and i i have to ask you about this james because i mean this has been something that's been talked about quite a bit um in, in democratic circles as to whether or not this is a good idea we've seen efforts by democratic campaigns and outside groups to tilt the playing field um, in their favor by propping up extremist Republican candidates uh, in some of these races, some of these very critical races around the country, the idea that it would make it easier for Democrats to win. But on the, on the flip side, if the vote doesn't go their way, you could end up with conspiracy theorists, election deniers, and so on in some pretty important places. Um, let's, let's listen to what House Speaker Nancy Pelosi had to say about it. So this is Pelosi's response when she got asked uh, about this strategy. I said that we need a strong Republican Party, not a cult of personality. That didn't mean we shouldn't have a strong Democratic Party as well. And the political decisions that are made out there are made uh, in furtherance of our winning the election because we think the contrast between Democrats and Republicans as they are now is so drastic that we have to, we have to win. Okay, so... I just want to say, as far as Nancy Pelosi goes, that was one of her better responses. Most of the time she mumbles and bumbles and is goes nowhere, and I don't know what she's trying to say. Um, so that was a good explanation. You're saying, listen, I believe we should have more moderate Republican candidates, but I also believe right now as the Republican Party stands, they're dangerous and Democrats are way better, so we're going to do everything we possibly can to try to beat them, even if that means propping up worse candidates in the primary. Uh, do we agree with it? I don't know. Was that a good response within the context of the question? Yes, I do think it was. Now, here's James Carville, even though nobody wants to hear what you have to say. He just annoys me so much. What do you think, James? I mean, is, is your party I, playing I, I, with fire? I, I, I love that woman. I just worship her. And the idea of a political campaign is to win the election. It acts in its own interest. And it, let's take Pennsylvania. It, okay. It, to be fair... Down here, it says Lee strategist for Clinton's 1992 presidential campaign. So, yes, he has, you know, credibility because he helped Bill Clinton win his reelection. And that was a good, you know, election on Bill Clinton's part. So I'm sure he has political knowledge. He just annoys me for some reason. Clearly was in Josh Shapiro's interest that the Republicans nominate Doug Mastriano. I would I've done the same thing. I would do the same thing. I don't see any, any ethical or moral problem with doing this. 
And again, I, I think most of the opposition to this is from the pontifical class, mostly located on the coast. Okay, so I don't know what that last point was. I, don't, I think, okay, whatever. Uh, so his response is, no, if this helps the Democrats win an election, I think it's totally fine. Uh, and I don't see any ethical or moral dilemma or issue with it. So there we go. I again recognize what the issue is, what the controversy is about, because you do have a situation where someone really bad could get up, uh, end up getting in office in part because of the support of the Democratic Party and the bolstering of them in the primary uh, if they end up going through and winning a general election. And we've now seen just like how the Democratic Party tried to help Trump. They favored Trump in the primary in 2015 because they thought he would be easier to beat. And then we got Trump as the president. So it's I guess you could say a high risk, high reward, but a really, really, really high risk. And that's why I think you should probably avoid it unless you have really, really good reason to believe that the person is so wacky, so unhinged that they can never win a general. But I don't think you can ever believe that in our current uh, political landscape. But again, if this helps us get a bunch of Democrats in office, I don't know. This one's hard for me. So please let me know what you think in the comments and uh, we will see how it goes, I guess, in 2022.